A Fox News alert, Senator Chuck Grassley says the Burisma executive who allegedly paid then Vice President Biden $5 million has audio recordings of their conversation and was keeping them as an insurance policy. Brooke Singman joins us now with the latest. Hey, hey, good morning, guys. Senator Grassley says the Burisma executive who allegedly paid President Biden $5 million has more than a dozen audio recordings of conversations he had with both Joe and Hunter Biden. Listen. The foreign national who allegedly bribed Joe and Hunter Biden allegedly has audio recordings of his conversation with them. Seventeen such recordings. These recordings were allegedly kept as a sort of insurance policy for the foreign national in case that he got into a tight spot. Grassley says that two of those recordings are with then Vice President Biden, while the other 15 are with his son, Hunter. Now, these stunning new revelations come as House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer subpoenas a key associate to the Biden family. Comer now wants Devin Archer to appear for a deposition on Friday, writing a letter that reads in part, quote, both information the committee has reviewed and public reporting indicates that Mr. Archer played a significant role in the Biden family's business deals abroad, including but not not limited to China, Russia, and Ukraine. Mr. Archer's testimony is critical to the committee's investigation. Now, President Biden also under scrutiny from Congressman Andy Ogles, who introduced articles of impeachment against him and Vice President Kamala Harris just yesterday. Ogles telling Fox News Digital, quote, Joe Biden has repeatedly abused his position of power, both as vice president and president, to cover up his illicit family business dealings and exploitation of taxpayer resources. Sources. He's violated his sworn oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Republican from Tennessee described Harris as Biden's accomplice and said she's allowed an unchecked land invasion of migrants at our southern border. Carly Todd. Brooke, thank you. A lot to break down there. Let's bring in former Acting Attorney General Matt Whitaker. Matt, if verified these phone calls that were recorded, could they bring down Joe Biden? Well, good morning. It's good to be with you both. Todd, to your point, um, yes, I mean, this is, this is explosive. And, you know, the, the, there's so many issues surrounding this. But remember what my home state Senator Chuck Grassley said. This was redacted from the document they looked at, the 1023 that was uh, Chris Ray uh, finally provided to the House and the Senate, uh, that this information, that there were recordings of the President of the United States talking to a foreign national about bribes, uh, was redacted from that uh, 1023. That, that's extraordinary in and of itself. Now, the contents, if true, I mean, obviously, this is a cataclysmic event uh, because you just don't have these types of uh, recordings usually available. And if you know, it will prove essentially what Joe Biden knew and, and, and what his scheme was uh, to abuse his power as vice president. Uh, what can we expect to happen later today when uh, former President Trump shows up to federal court? Yeah, Carly. Uh, well, I mean, it's just going to be another uh, circus, uh, mostly created by the media. It's, it's a simple process. An, a, an appearance and an arraignment uh, is typically, uh, you know, the, the defendant comes into court, uh, is processed, and then typically, uh, the, you know, the, the, there's an option to have the, uh, the documents read to him. Uh, make sure he understands his rights. Uh, make sure they set a, you know trial dates and a and a schedule. And it's usually a fairly simple process. I've done hundreds of them as a, as a prosecutor or as a defense attorney, and uh, they're never uh, too too extraordinary. And obviously, the a plea of not guilty will be entered uh, in right. the and the process starts. It's usually it's the first process, first step. The judge handling today is not Judge Eileen Cannon. Eileen Cannon is the judge that will handle the, handle the matter in its entirety unless the left seems to get their way and get her kicked off the case. Here's CNN yesterday talking about the judge. Do you see a scenario at all where DOJ would say maybe there's a conflict of interest here? Big question here. Could there be a potential conflict of interest. Well, first, there's the point that she was a Trump nominee. We've never had this before because we've never had a president capable of appointing federal judges as a defendant. But Matt, presidents literally appoint all federal judges. So 
under that line of thinking that, oh, Trump appointed her, it seems like every federal judge cannot hear any case because either they were appointed by one party and or they don't like the other party because that other party didn't appoint them. It's a horrible line of thinking, isn't it? And a very dangerous line of thinking, to your point, Todd. You know, obviously, today is going to be handled by uh, the magistrate, uh, Reinhardt, who we are familiar with because he signed the search warrant for Mar-a-Lago. Uh, you know, I, each judge actually makes their own decision for recusal and, and does their own process um, and determination for what uh, is necessary. I don't see that just because a president appointed you without a f more... Uh, or deeper relationship that it would require her to be recused. But remember, the left just wants to slam this prosecution through, and the judge and the jury right now are the only things that are going to be in their way. So you're going to hear them uh, complaining uh, loudly, uh, trying to right. you know streamline this and make it more like what would happen here in Washington D.C. So Matt, we're hearing from legal experts that this case is going to come down to the Espionage Act versus the Presidential Records Act. Can you explain these two laws in layman's terms, and which one you think better applies here? Yeah. Well, it's very simple. The Espionage Act was passed in 1917 in the Woodrow Wilson administration, uh, and, 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 and the Presidential Records Act was passed uh, 50 years later uh, after Richard Nixon. And it applied to Ronald Reagan was the first president it applied to, but it says in on its text all documents, all records of the, the administration. And so that's a very broad uh, statute. And obviously, when Congress passed the Presidential Records Act, they knew that the Espionage Act was in, in existence and, and could apply. And they didn't accept uh, national defense information or classified information. So, the, I, I, you know, for me, that is the, the main issue in this case. And, I, you know, I, I think President Trump is right when he says that, you know, he was operating under the, the Presidential Records Act, uh, which, you know, required him to cooperate with the archives, required them to mm -hmm. sort through what was personal and what was presidential records. And I, I think that is the analysis. Pre you know, it, let's just be honest. Like, presidents and former presidents are different under the Constitution and under some of the statutes, especially this Presidential Records Act. And there's a case uh, actually apply that applies to that Richard Nixon, which was a, a predecessor of the Presidential Records Act, called the PRSA. Mm -hmm. And there's some interesting case law in that, and it may be uh, helpful in the guidance on this case as well. If this gets to a jury, and I'm Trump's attorneys, I'm saying the Espionage Act was designed to go after spies. Is Donald Trump a spy? That's yeah. like the question I would ask the jury, and I think it clearly is the answer is no, but we will see a lot well, of Trump legal Trump is apparently process. looking for lawyers. Yeah, so. he's looking for lawyers. You really so. need to quit practicing law, I'm not, Todd. <laughs> I'm understood. understood. <laughs> Matt Whitaker. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, sir.